Here's a question which philosophers have been asking since Plato. Does increasing intelligence or knowledge bring about increasing benevolence in humans? We'll extrapolate this question to machines, and specifically to superhumanly intelligent systems. That's because when the first flexible artificial general intelligences are developed in coming decades, they will want to improve their own intelligence because it will help them achieve their goals, whatever those goals may be. Once they've done that, they'll be even better able to improve their intelligence, and so on, in a rising spiral called the intelligence explosion. So we'll be discussing this philosophical question for superintelligences, defined by I.J. Good as those which can far surpass all the intellectual activities of any man, however clever. We'll present some more formal definitions later in the talk. In order to discuss this question about uh, morality, we'll divide it into two categories, instrumental and axiological. Instrumental morality is benevolence as a tool, as a means to achieve other ends. Axiological morality is benevolence as a terminal value, as an ultimate end, as a goal in its own right. And in the context of this talk, we'll be using the words benevolence and morality in a consequentialist sense. In other words, do the actions of a goal-seeking entity result in the well-being of humanity? And not whether the well-being of humanity is embedded as a, as a goal per se, uh, or whether the entity obeys deontological rules. Now, there are reasons to think that intelligence leads to benevolence. Looking at the course of Earth's history, we find greater instrumental cooperation over time. So, uh, even uh, cleaner fish are capable of cooperation with larger fish. They swim into their mouths, eat the parasites. The larger fish get a teeth cleaning, but they don't bite down for a free meal. And that's because these fish are intelligent enough to identify each other over time and to track each other's behavior and to reward cooperation with further cooperation. Going on to the next level of intelligence, to humans, we find the humans are capable of social structures of greater scope and complexity than any other animal. And they don't rely on kinship altruism like insects. So humans have increased the scope of their societies over time, from hunter-gatherer bands, to city-states, to nation-states, to transnational groupings, and to global cooperation through trade and treaty. This has gone along with an accumulation of cultural knowledge in these human societies. And it might be said that there is a causal correlation. On the axiological side, Peter Singer has identified an expanding circle of moral concern. That is to say, the group of people whom one treats as fully human, as worthy of pity, compassion, and uh, not as subhuman. So, uh, hunter-gatherers uh, are often suspicious of anyone not of their own tribe as potential enemies, and often their word for human is the same as the word for their tribe. As we go through human history, we find that larger and larger groupings are treated as fully worthy of human concern, from the period of the Greek city-states to 20th century nationalism and racism. In each case, people were capable of treating those within their in-group with uh, great compassion, but often had no concern for the suffering of those outside their in-group. Today, pretty much everyone at least pays lip service to the idea that all humans are deserving of moral concern. So the scope of axiological morality has expanded as well. Can we extrapolate from these cases to future machine superintelligences? But we have to be very careful of extrapolation from one data point. And humans are one data point because we all have a common mental architecture with shared modules developed in us by evolution. A future AI might be built on a human model. It could be an uploaded brain or uh, it, it could even be not artificial so much as a augmented biological in, uh, intelligence, which becomes a superintelligence. But it's also quite likely that a future artificial general intelligence will be constructed on computer science principles, which can be quite different from the human mind, both in uh, goals and in the means used to achieve those goals. So we'll trace some potential paths from intelligence to benevolence, paths which have perhaps served humans and which may serve AIs in the future, and we'll ask whether uh, these will bring uh, benevolence to future superintelligences. First of all, on the instrumental side, uh, 
instrumental benevolence means that uh, benevolent behavior is rewarded by others, or the opposite is punished. Benevolent disposition means that those who reliably help without a hope of immediate reward are rewarded because others know that they're trustworthy. Better to trust someone than to uh, rely on knowing that they're under constant fear of punishment. On the axiological side, uh, we might hope that future superintelligences will have built-in terminal values. And some have uh, said that this is necessary to there being superintelligences. Or if not, we might hope that with sufficient reason and reflection, these superintelligences will converge their terminal values on benevolent ones. Starting on the instrumental side, we find that humans use instrumental benevolence throughout their societies. Even the worst sociopath will buy what he needs rather than stealing it, usually. And that's partially because of the Leviathan, the state, with police, with government, with taxes to enforce people uh, sharing, in a sense, their resources with others. But even without the state, uh, reputation is very important. And uh, people know they can cooperate with others who have uh, set up a good reputation. Trade is very valuable. Uh, and here we're talking about instrumental benevolence. You don't have to care about someone else's well-being to trade with them and uh, for both sides to benefit. Conflict, likewise, hurts all sides. As long as humans have the power to monitor, punish, and reward one another, instrumental benevolence is widespread in every society. And in AIs, there might be some mechanisms where this would actually work better. A machine substrate would allow monitoring to be built in to the computer, or even a kill switch couple of ideas that have not yet been implemented for humans, fortunately. And as it increases its intelligence, it might invent new coordination mechanisms. After all, we're talking about superintelligences here. This does not rely on the AI having a human-like mental architecture. As long as it needs to cooperate with humans, as long as it needs their rewards, as long as it fears their punishments, instrumental benevolence is a value to it. And beyond that, an AI could better prove the benevolence of its disposition. We'd rather trust the AI than uh, constantly monitor it for that uh, pressing the kill switch. To do this, the AI needs translucency. It needs to be able to demonstrate that it is worthy of trust. We humans do this to some extent. We watch each other and try to understand who's trustworthy with some degree of accuracy. But an AI could do this even better by exposing its source code. And it might even provide mathematical proofs that it's benevolent. That's not something computer scientists can do today. But again, we're positing a superintelligence. And if the AI begins on this course when it's still weak, when it's still at roughly human levels, then as it self-improves, the proofs could still serve to guarantee its benevolent dispositions, even as it reaches superintelligence. But all these forms of instrumental benevolence rely on roughly equal power levels between the AI and humans. A sufficiently powerful intelligence does not need the help of inferiors. It can evade monitoring and punishment. So we cooperate with uh, horses, for example. Uh, they serve us and uh, we feed them. But uh, when the time came, the horses were not quite so useful to humanity. Many of them were sent to the glue factory. We simply had no need for them to cooperate with us, uh, except on our own terms. And that's a benevolent behavior, but on the side of benevolent uh, disposition, a, sufficient, a sufficiently intelligent entity could fake those proofs of benevolence. It could fake translucency.